Okay, we're in Proverbs chapter 4. <clears throat> Hear ye children. So this goes beyond my son. As, as Solomon has been writing. Children. His children, any children in general. The instruction of a father. So he's writing in general. And attend to no understanding. And we know Solomon wrote this. For I give you good doctrine. Fors forsake ye not my law. Children. Again, can we apply this to if God was speaking to his children? He doesn't say the father, but still, can we have that application that Proverbs is God speaking to the children? I know we're not under the law, but there's a law. God has a law. Be not deceived, God's not mocked, whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. That's a law. It's called the law of sowing and reaping. There's another law. The wages of sin is death. And that's written to Christians. I know we use it for evangelistic work. But that's written to Christians. You sin, you're going to die. We're sinners. We're going to die outside the chance of the rapture happening. A father. Well, he's got laws in his house. Listen, you got laws of a nation. You got laws of a state of providence where you live. You got municipal laws. You got laws in the workplace. You got laws in a house. You got laws in a, in a grocery store. We're all around laws, rules, and regulations to keep in order. And a father that does not have a law in his house has a disorderly house. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother, and that would be David and Bathsheba. He taught me also he what? Wait a minute. David was king. David was king after Saul was born. David had no time for his children. David had to go to war. David had to fight. David had to rule the kingdom. David had many things to do. And yet Solomon tells us that David taught him things. The Bible sets forth that the parents are to raise the children, not the public school system, which are doing a very fine, terrible job of raising our children today. They're raising them anti-God, anti-creation, and lawless. It is not the job of a school to train your children and the public the government has set up such a system and, and with the weights and standards of everybody in the household's got to work and everybody can't take care of their children because they got to send them to school because they got to work to pay everything. How on earth during the Depression, the early years of America, that a man and a woman could have six and seven children and take care of their family and you can't even get a man and a woman and, and take care of a child? They called the word inflation. 
but I call it complete and overcharge and overbearing upon the family. David's king, yet he taught me also and said unto me, Let thy heart retain my words. Keep, the, keep my commandments and live. That's what David told Solomon. You know what a father will tell their children today? Vote for this team. You know, as a family, we root for this team. We root for this, this car number. We like this. We like that. And it's anything but anything biblical and in the sense of God. There are families growing up in the, the worship athletes. There are families that grow up in certain movies. There are families that grow up in politics. There's families that grow up in a certain business. There's, but there's less families that grow up in the Lord and in the King James Bible. You say that's an unfair statement. Where's the family Sunday morning? You know how many families are absent from midweek service because it, it's ballerina time, it's softball time, it's baseball time, it's bowling time, it's the man's night out time. And yet there's no time for God and the family and the man to take up. And even when you do have a family and they go to church, the Bible says the man is to take charge of that family. The man is to be the head of that family. The man is to answer his wife's question. The man is to be his biblical standard of living in that house. But we'll turn the kids over to the public school system. We'll turn them over to Herod. We'll turn them over to, uh, to Pharaoh. And then we'll turn our wives over to the pastor. Friend, that's wrong. I'm too busy. You got to get to why you're busy, what's going on with business, and why you can't do what you can do as a parent for your children. I know, I know what this country is doing. We got all the modern conveniences today, but we ain't got no time to do nothing. We got all the modern greatness that our grandparents didn't have, and we have no money in our wallets. Something's wrong. And David said, My words retain. My commandments and it will bring light. An average, average, you gotta be careful as we get closer and closer to the end times. The average parent does not want the harm of their children. Because as we're getting ender and ender and I can't imagine the parents today. And yet there are children growing up, they don't even know who their parents are. They don't even have any idea who their father is. That's sad. There are some children who are out there just because of welfare will give her more money. That's a whore. But there are fathers out there who care for their children and they set forth advice, they give them standards. I, I don't know, I can't remember any sound words my dad ever taught me. I don't know any. My mom, I remember much of my grandpa who survived the, the, the depression, he taught me a lot. Get wisdom. How plain and simple is that? Get wisdom. Wisdom is, listen, you can know everything you want. But do you know how to, do you know how to use what you know? You can know about a chainsaw. But if you start the chainsaw holding the blade, you have no wisdom. If you're going to be a fool and, and, and play with fireworks and light them while you're still holding them in your hand, it, well, I know what the firework would do, but I just don't know how to use it. 
get wisdom, get understanding. So guess what? Wisdom and understanding does not come with birth. You've got to go out there physically and get it. And again, we're in a time and age where, where the government has set forth great prices of universities and colleges. Where just a little years ago, we had a president of Abraham Lincoln would sit in his room and go to the library and get books and learn about a career. Without the expensive of expenses of learning a trade. There was a time that you could go to the library and you could get information. The library today is the last place for information. Oh, we go to the internet. We run to, to Google and listen, that internet stuff may be a lie. I'm telling you right now, the more and more we get to the close of the end time, things are, listen, the history that is most of the history is being taught in the public school system is a lie. They have changed all of it to suit one race of people. And the fact to get up there and say we came from evolution is a lie according to the Bible. They even had a thing called common core math. It wasn't even the right math. When you get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not. So guess what? You can forget wisdom and understanding you got. You got to keep up. Or you got to keep working. You got to keep doing. You got to keep it up. Or you'll forget it. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. That's the mouth of David the king. So besides your dad, and I know what generation I'm talking, going back to the generation of Solomon, not only does mom and dad give you wisdom to understand, you got to go out there and get it more. Rehoboam had no wisdom. I'm going to go to the kids that I grew up in school and I'm going to ask what they say about it. And completely split the nation in two that the nation has been in split. Two, ever since. Forsake her not. That would be wisdom. Solomon sets forth wisdom as a woman. And she shall preserve thee. Keep, keep thee up. Keep your going. If you die right in, as a child of God, you'll preserve into glory. Where if you don't, you'll be perishing in hell. Love her, and she shall, she shall keep thee. you got to love wisdom. Again, the public school system, they spend millions of tax dollars on students who don't even care. They don't love, they don't want to be there. As soon as they're able to drop out, they dropped out and you wasted all the taxpayers' money. Work. Meanwhile, you had children who want to do, who want to grow, who want to learn, and they fall by the wayside because of the losers. One of, the, one of the best things about homeschooling is you can take that time that is need for that child. That child knows that subject. Okay, let's move on to the next one. If that child's having trouble in that subject, okay, we can slow down, put the brakes on, we can yield, and we can work that out. You can't do that with a classroom of 25 kids in that classroom. One quarter want to do one. One quarter don't even care, don't even want to be there. One quarter... I'll just go with the flow. She shall keep thee. Wis wisdom will keep do, but you got to get it and you can't forget it. 
Wisdom is the principal thing. Got to aim for money. You ain't going to make money if you have no wisdom. I'm going to get the ultimate career. You ain't going to get that career without wisdom. I'm going to be the best Christian ever. Not without wisdom, you're not. I'm going to be the best toothpick maker ever. Not if you know which, not what wood you're not supposed to use to make toothpicks. If you want to make toothpicks, you got to know the trees. Which trees are good and which trees are not good. Principle. The chief important. Wisdom is that you know something and how to apply what you know. A dog knows that that can of dog food is his. But he has no wisdom to put it in the can opener and hit the can opener through. Knowledge. I know in that can is my food. Wisdom. And you don't know how to open it. And understanding not to a relationship with God, that dog, hey, that's my master. If I treat him right, wag my tail, he's going to feed me. He's going to operate that can so I can get in it. Wisdom will get you out of trouble. I have today, I think it's today. I don't know how many phony phone calls I've got yet yesterday and today. Your credit card. I don't have a credit card. Call it, you know, hang on the phone, press one. No, I don't have it. You have a chance to, I mean, there's, there's, there's one going on right now. You have a package that has not been delivered. I didn't order no package. Wisdom is, hang up. Don't press no numbers. Don't say anything. Don't do nothing. There are so many frauds out there. But if you have no wisdom. I'm trying to think of an expression I can give you as, as an older person to you. I'm trying to remember what it was. Give me a moment. Click my own brain. If it's too good to be true. That's, that's not what I'm thinking about. Too, well, that's a good one, too. If it's too good to be true, guess what? See, I had wisdom and I forgot. Wisdom is a principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. What do you think Solomon and David is telling us? And with all thy getting... Get understanding. Do you get it? Do you got it? Do you got it? Keep getting. Because you're never going to get enough. Go through Genesis to Revelation. You get it. Get some more. Go back to Genesis to Revelation. You want to get more? Which book of the Bible you like? Okay, read that. Look at it. Study it. Start looking up words of the Bible. Start looking at cross references. Start studying the Word of God as Paul said to do. You're going to be getting. Listen, I've got things. But I study the Bible daily and I get more. I'm still learning the Bible, and this Bible has been recorded since 2000, year 2000. I've read it at least once all the way through, and I'm still getting things. Because I have not stopped getting, and I have not stopped at got. I'm not happy with I got it. I'm happy with I want more. That's how you grow. Exalt her. Wisdom. And when we looked at Proverbs chapter 1, we looked at the night we, when we did this, the street preacher, we saw that wisdom was her. 
Wisdom is the Holy Spirit. Love the Holy Spirit. I know we Baptists, we're afraid of the Holy Spirit. You know, because we don't want that Holy Spirit to charismatic. Ooh. Yeah, but wisdom comes from the Holy Spirit. Jesus said the Holy Spirit will speak of me and will teach you. And he will, rem or, yeah, he will remind you. That's what, and he's the comforter, Jesus said, the work of the Holy Spirit. Read through your Bible. And if you come to a passage that draws interest, like, what on earth is that about? Take yourself a pencil and put a, a question mark. And see if God will ever answer that question. Now, I've got question marks in my Bible. Some have been answered. And some have not been answered. Will they be answered? I don't know. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. In the book of Psalms we read, East, West, South, promotion is of the Lord. Well, you know, I didn't get that promotion on earth. Well, maybe if you live right, do right. Maybe God will give you a promotion. You'll get, you'll get inheritance. See, we can't read the Bible and say, "Oh, promotion! Oh, I'm going to get that job." I'm going it may not be an earthly thing. We're not to set our treasures in in the heaven. I mean, the earth. We're to set our treasures in heaven. But if you want to get a promotion. At your job, you need wisdom. You need to prove to your boss that you are capable of knowing the job, how to do the job, and the understanding of the job that hopefully you will be promoted. Wisdom promotes. She shall bring thee to honor. When thou do it, when thou dost embrace her. Now look at real quick, 70, Psalm 75, 6. Psalm 75, 6. That's what I just said. Promotion cometh neither from the east. Nor from the west, nor from the south, but God. Promotion doesn't come from the east, west, or south, but God. All right. Come back over to uh, Proverbs chapter 4. Verse 8, exalt her and she shall promote thee. Not only that the Holy Spirit, but that's God. God and the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ is wisdom. Love them. Get them. Got them. Keep getting them. Love them. Exalt them. And when thou dost embrace her, hold on tight. She shall give to thy head an ornament of grace. Well, who gives grace? God does. Again, that's not that Christmas ornament. Those Christmas ornaments are of the devil. You want an ornament? Get an ornament of grace. How do you get an ornament of grace? Wisdom. God. Jesus. The Holy Spirit. Love. Keep. Get. God. Exalt. Embrace. Well, how's God going to honor you? And the judgment seat of Christ, if we get gold, silver, and precious stone, when he brings that crown, that's honor. Here's a person, here's a saint that's done a well done job. There'll be no honor for wood, hay, and stubble. And wood and hay and stubble is no wisdom. Well, I know there's crowns, but I didn't work for them. I didn't go get them. 
And I sure didn't understand what God's relationship is to it. Hear, O oh my son, there's that my son again, and receive my saying. All right, I told you about Grandpa, Grandpa David. Now I'm telling you as your dad. So everything that we've read is David speaking to Solomon. Now he says, okay, in the words of me, not Grandpa, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. Well, look what David said in verse 4. He taught me also and said unto me, Let thy heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and live. Solomon is assuring his children that what grandpa said was true. A father can't assure what grandpa has said in the household if father don't know what was said. And where grandparents were used to be true to the church and God and Jesus, fathers today are not. I thought it was funny. I, I used to watch with my wife, I used to watch the Waltons. I think it's a good family show. And one time, one of the sons. He was going to go into ministry and all that. And he quoted the Bible, you know, uh, uh, if a man with a plow looks back, he's not worthy. I don't know that verse complete right now, but I'm not worthy. And, and the father gets up there, oh, son, I don't really think that's that's what God's thinking of that verse and all that. And then I learned that, that the father, I forget what religion it was, but the man that played Mr. Walton, I forget that name. Was a minister ordained. And he's playing a TV dad as an ordained minister to telling this, who supposedly is not his son, but he's lying. Yeah, you know, well, that's not what the scripture really means because the television company doesn't want to tell us what the scripture means. You're adding confusion. Solomon is telling his children as his, as his own fathers told the children. Wisdom of God, the word of God is life. And for the Christian and people on this side of Calvary, between Calvary and between the rapture or death, you're to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. That's life. I have taught thee, talking to his son, in the way of wisdom. You get a father gets up there. All right, come on, son. You can have a sip of my beer. Isn't it cute? Look at it. Look at him having a sip of beer. That's not wisdom. It's not wisdom for. For a father to be talking to his children against their mother. Neither for the mother to be speaking against the father. That's not wisdom. Wisdom, go out there, take the kid, like I've done with mine. You take the kid with a fishing rod and go teach him how to fish. You teach him how to, how to read. Teach them what is right, what is wrong. I've taught my children that with the Bible. Because when the world is out there and they're teaching the Bible wrong, my children know what the Bible says. They know who to go to. Dad, you know, you know what that person said? Well, let's see what the scriptures say. Well, what did the scriptures say? Well, that must be right and they must be wrong. You're not careful. You listen to those morons out there. If you don't check the scriptures, I had led thee in the right path. 
Solomon has learned from David, and you'll find in Proverbs that he quotes David in the Psalms. You're going to find the book of Proverbs, David, in the Psalms. Solomon didn't hear the voice either. Rehoboam didn't hear this voice either. I don't know what Jesse taught David. But we all don't listen to the Father. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. When you're keeping your eye on God. I know the Bible says it's a narrow path that leads to the gate of salvation. But that pathway, when, when, we, when you are living and serving God, it's not hard. You know, many people say, well, if I get a Christian, I get like, it's going to be a miserable, hard life. I don't know. It's, it's easy. I wish I'd do more. I wish there'd be more opportunity. And stumble. You're going to walk right as long as you're walking right with God. And the moment you stumble and sin is because you have taken your eyes off God. Or you're challenging God that well, I can get away with it, even though I know it's wrong. Look at 419. The way of the wicked is in darkness. They know not at what they stumble. The wicked stumble all over the place. They don't even know what they're stumbling. God is angry with the wicked. Psalm 711. And they don't even know it. They are going to go to hell. And they are stumbling away to, into hell. And they think they are right. Even if they come to a wall called the gospel. They climb over that wall, like, and then climb over that wall. They fall into hell, like, what? What happened? There are people who are going to die, and there are people who have died, and they woke up in hell, like, why? And I could give you many things, but I'm just saying, they stumble. The drunk that's living under a bridge that's homeless has stumbled and he doesn't realize the stumbling began when he had that first drink. And he had the second drink. And he had the third drink. And he had the fourth drink. He didn't stop. He didn't stop and was upset in his wife. He didn't stop and was ruining his children. He didn't stop. He lost his job. He didn't stop when the doctor said stop. Stumble. There are even Christians that stumble with the word of God. Number one stumble is I don't read the word of God. That's a big stumble. When the Bible says study to show thyself approved unto God. I can prove to you the Bible says to read the Bible. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Now I know they got that verse in Hebrew, you know, forsaken assembly of the saints. Hebrews. I'm not a Hebrew. How do you throw that verse at me? I'm not a Hebrew. I can throw at you. Well, we got a big church. Well, in the book of Acts, they met in a house. 
and I, I forget which church it is. I'm not going to run over there. But one of the seven churches that, that John writes to is, is called Much Marriage. I forget what the name of that one is. And Much Marriage is they adopted a Catholic church. So the Catholic Church would stop killing them, and one of the uh, one of the adaptions they had into the church was big church buildings and stained glass windows and candles and a lot of things that are wrong and people think they're right in the church, a Baptist church today, happened with with the church back then with much marriage. Churches can't realize that what's going on in the church could be anti-Bible. Thinking it is Bible and you stumbled because you don't have the knowledge, you don't have the wisdom, you don't have the understanding, you don't study church history. And if you do stu study church history and you are involved in stumbling, you are studying the wrong church history that's been perverted. And when you stumble is when you're walking around the, and the devil sticks his foot out. And you end up in the mud. And you say, oh, I love this mud. It's good for the, it's good for the complexion. It's good for the skin. There are people that pay big money to sit in mud. And know nothing of God. Take fast hold of instruction. Fast hold is it's like it's a ship, it's tied. It's fastened, it's knotted. You ain't leaving. You ain't gonna fall off the ship. It ain't gonna fall off the ship. It is fastened, it's tied, hold of instruction. Well, look at verse 4. David taught. Look at verse 11. Solomon taught. And I'm, I'm telling you right now, again, we've got families and fathers today. They're not teaching the children right. And Proverbs is become, by the family standard today, has become old and archaic. And that's a shame. It is a shame that... That people today will go to church for entertainment rather than go to church for holiness. That's a shame. Take fast hold of instruction and let her not go. Keep her as you would with wisdom. For she is thy life. You want to live longer? Get wisdom. You want to live eternally? Get wisdom. Wisdom is not in education. Wisdom is not in religion. Religion is not in science. It's in God. And the, 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 the wisdom for the Old Testament is to perform the laws and do what you're supposed to do according to the law. Today, it's to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, study and rightly divide the word of God to your life. And there are foolish people out there, well, I do the law, I keep the law, and we... That ain't wisdom. When the Bible says you're not supposed to... Listen, there's people out there, they're involved in the law, and they have Saturday Sabbath in the church age and all that. Paul wrote an entire letter, I forget which one it was, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, or Colossians. I forget which church it is. Have a guy like that. You know, I go to seven, listen to that book. I said, you got to read that book. you got to study that book. Paul says it's wrong. And then there's a church that, that Saturday, well, used to, COVID-19. We drive by this church and it would say Bible study. And I giggle because... Bible study would show you that Paul says you're not supposed to meet on Saturday Sabbath.
And I guarantee you a church like that, not even told by the members. They break the Sabbath laws because they come up with their own laws. The very fact is, if you come home from, Sab from Sabbath, 2020s come home and spark your your stove to make hot dogs well you spark your stove that's that's working you violate the sabbath your hot dogs that's not kosher you fired up you, you turned the key and the fire went on the pistons and all that that's doing work Why? Why is there false religion and false stuff and, and, and all this education? Not, because there's no wisdom of God. And then some people have the wrong Bible. They don't have a King James. I, well, then you ain't got it. You ain't got it. And you ain't going to get it without a King James Bible. 